Hi, my name is Edward, and my topic is on outsourcing. Um, outsourcing can be generally described as when um, production of goods and services are transferred from uh, one location to another, whether domestic in the nation or abroad into a foreign country. Um, in 2004, uh, there was heated debate on outsourcing um, when John Kerry, Senator John Kerry, the Democratic, Democratic presidential candidate, criticized uh, George Bush on his uh, lack of control on outsourcing. Um, economic, economists uh, Gregory Mankill and Philip Swaggle um, note the opposition that outsourcing is a major factor in accounting for the weak job market in 2002 and 2003. Um, although the U.S. has reached an economic decline, um, the claim that um, outsourcing uh, leads to overall job loss is not necessarily true. Therefore, my proposition is that outsourcing has a positive impact on the U.S. economy through restructuring the American workforce to become more competitive, um, maximizing U.S. companies' revenue and profits, thus increasing tax revenue and the gross domestic product. And my third secondary claim, outsourcing contributes to the globalization and the global economy, uh, allowing the U.S. economy to be internationally competitive, and it also maximizes the imports and exports. Back to my first secondary claim, that outsourcing restructures the American workforce to become more competitive. Um, it can't be denied that there are going to be jobs lost due to outsourcing. However, for those that do lose their jobs, um, they don't lose everything. They, they still retain the skills and experience from their past jobs. That results in still a possibility of finding another job in a broader area of the industry. Um, Mary Amity in an economic journal states that uh, when disaggregating the U.S. economy to 450 industries, there is a small negative effect on employment. However, aggregating up to 100 sectors, there are no job losses associated with service outs outsourcing, which implies that for those who have lost jobs, um, they probably found another job in the expanding part of the, their job sector. Um, Harry Stonecipher, uh, former president and CEO of the Boeing Corporation, uh, speaks about um, how it's okay for Americans to um, <coughs> for Americans to be frightened that um, they are facing a competitive uh, competition over jobs. Um, this kind of realization that Americans need training um, to be more highly skilled uh, or specialized in a certain job uh, shows more promise in the future for um, the job market. Uh, my, on my second claim, outsourcing maximizes U.S. companies' revenue and profits. Um, Basically, successful companies help preserve the nation's industries. Uh, uh, in addition, consumers spend more as the company lowers production costs. Uh, the OCD claims that the reduction will contribute to better control of inflation and a slowdown in consumer price rises. Uh, I look at the example of like the iPhone 5 uh, for a 16 gigabyte device, it's about $400, which is affordable for some. But imagine if uh, the Apple Corporation didn't utilize um, Chinese assembly lines, um, that omitting the cheaper labor would probably increase the prices of the iPhone, which would probably make the iPhone less affordable to the US, um, US consumers and thus affecting the US economy. Um, in addition, uh, because of the cheaper labor, companies are able to reinvest their profits and expand, resulting into more jobs in the long term. Um, even if outsourcing leads to some shedding of the labor, the increased efficiency could lead to higher production and expansion of employment in other lines of work. 
we can see uh, through the statistic of the OCD, OEH, OECD that from 1995 to 2003, um, the U.S. lost 2.6 million jobs in, man in the manufacturing sector. However, they gained 14.1 million jobs in the services sector. In addition, in 2006, according to the National Bureau of Economic Research, the U.S. income increased 12 to 14 cents per dollar of outsourcing in India, which shows that is it is worth it to invest into um, foreign affiliates. Now, for my third secondary claim, that outsourcing contributes to the global economy and thus increases imports and exports in the U.S. Um, first of all, um, some people might say that imports might be uh, a negative thing, that other countries will benefit more. However, you can see that exports and imports go quite in hand in hand. Um, exports in the first place, it increases foreign spending on American products. Um, imports, however, um, <coughs> increase uh, Increase the jobs uh, and result in an increase in jobs in the U.S. economy because um, when products become imported in the U.S., um, the jobs in the U.S. Are like transportation, finance, and uh, retail are needed to process the products. Uh, one of the stronger forms of outsourcing and globalization in the global economy is uh, the transatlantic trade, which has been around for a few centuries. Uh, the transatlantic trade generated three, generates three trillion in commercial sales and employs up to 14 million workers. And it's unlikely to generate transatlantic tensions um, market because. Um, Anyway, um, in conclusion, outsourcing does have a positive impact on the economy, and that's through restructuring the American workforce to become more competitive, uh, maximizing U.S. companies' revenue and profits to make them more competitive against other foreign companies, and the third claim, uh, contributing to the global economy and allowing the U.S. to become more competitive internationally. All right, it takes you a while to get to the proposition, but you do so. It's relatively clear. You did signpost the, point, the, the uh, three points that you had, but the phrasing on those points was a little complicated. Uh, there's a good explanation about what outsourcing is and why there's a controversy on it, although it sounds like we're talking about something that's almost nine years ago now, so I'm not exactly sure that it continues to be the same kind of problem that it was, let's say, in the mid-2000s. Um, uh, the signposting on your points when you get to them, that's usually pretty clear. There's always a good explanation of the process that you're talking about. There's not always solid proof on all of those processes. I thought that the numbers on jobs were pretty well explained and that you had some good statistical data on those particular points. The stuff on trade is largely asserted and you need better information on it. And on that last point, you sort of bail out uh, you know, without even following through on it. Uh, once in a while, you sound a little bit hesitant like you got stuck on an idea and I don't know if you just needed some more practice or you weren't sure how those ideas fit together but usually you have pretty solid audience contact you do go substantially over time so you want to be careful about that too okay